So yesterday, the province announced that all of Ontario will go into a shutdown effective December 26, 2020 at 12.01 a.m. The North Bay Perry Sound District Health Unit is considered part of Northern Ontario and will be in shutdown for 14 days. The link to the provincial shutdown information can be found on our website, myhealthunit.ca. We've received a number of excellent questions from the media about the shutdown and COVID-19 in general. I'll now take the time to go through these questions. Bradley Auburn, Moose FM. With most Northern health units staying in the green zone since the tiers were introduced, why do you believe we were lumped into a provincial-wide shutdown when we have accounted for such a low percentage of the cases? Although we were in the green zone, I am supportive of a province-wide shutdown as this is the most effective way to reduce the number of individuals testing positive for COVID-19 and spreading the virus. Data was indicating that there was a large number of people moving between public health unit districts. The province-wide shutdown will discourage travel from areas with many individuals who have tested positive for COVID-19 to areas with fewer which will help keep our numbers low. We are all in this together. Without a province-wide shutdown, it was highly likely that we would have eventually experienced a rise in the number of individuals testing positive for COVID-19, similar to Southern Ontario. Next question, with us being in shutdown alongside Southern Ontario, does that put us on equal footing for vaccine distribution? When can we expect needles in arms? when it comes to vaccines in the North. Do you have any information pertaining to how many doses we will receive and where they will be administered in our district? At this time, the province is in the planning phase and it's really too early to be able to speak to when and how the COVID-19 vaccine will be rolled out for our Northern health units and within our district. What we do know is that there is very limited supply of the Pfizer vaccine but more is expected soon. And there are areas of the province with far more cases and outbreaks than we currently have. Their need is more urgent. So we have to be patient until more vaccine is available. We will share information with the public when more information becomes available from the province. So please contact the Ministry of Health for any additional questions. Sarah Cook, Perry Sound North Star. If the South extends the shutdown past 28 days, how likely is it for the North to extend theirs? Well, we don't know the answer to that question, but you raise a very important point. Uh, at this time, all we can say is that the trends in both Southern Ontario and Northern Ontario will be monitored very, very closely to determine if the shutdown should be extended in either region. What is important to consider is the current situation in which a health unit district is in lockdown beside a health unit district with less restrictive measures in place. What happens is very predictable. People from high risk areas will travel to lower risk areas, exposing them. We must do whatever we can to prevent that from happening. It may mean extending the lockdown in the North beyond the 14 days scheduled for the 26th. The next question is, where can First Nations COVID reporting be found? Information on the number of individuals who have tested positive for COVID-19 and live in Indigenous communities can be found on the Indigenous Services Canada website. However, there are a number of factors that determine where an individual count will be assigned. Currently, as instructed by Public Health Ontario, all individuals who test positive for COVID-19 within our district who have a permanent residence in an Indigenous community are counted in our local numbers. Have there been any cases to your knowledge of community spread via elementary schools? That's something we're monitoring very closely. And in our district, we have not identified any examples of community spread within elementary or secondary schools. However, there have been outbreaks in schools throughout the province. Cases in schools for the most part reflect local transmission rates rather than driving up community spread. Has there been an increase in young adults contracting COVID-19? Yes. In the past month, we have seen a larger number of young adults contract COVID-19 in our district. More recently, the age of individuals who have tested positive for COVID-19 in our district has varied. 
Eventually, those in the 19 and under age group have the third most reported cases in the last week, compared to the 20 to 39 age group and the 40 to 59 age group. Chelsea from Papno asks, and she's at CTV, um, uh, how many COVID-related hospitalizations are there in our district? Currently, we have one individual who tested positive for COVID-19 in our district and has been admitted to the critical care unit. Alana Pickerel, CTV, Northern Ontario. We're seeing an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases in our district. Why do we think that's happening? Well, we're seeing an increase in the number of individuals testing positive in our district for a number of reasons. Some are due to travel outside the district. Many are close contacts of known cases, and some are from community spread. Certainly, the rising number in the province in general is affecting our case counts locally. To slow the spread, everyone needs to take personal responsibility and follow public health recommendations. If we do not work together and act now, things will get worse and the lockdown will have to be extended. Nobody wants that. By following public health recommendations and acting now, we have the ability to slow the spread as we accomplished in the first wave and end the lockdown. Therefore, we recommend that you only celebrate the holidays in person with people you live with. So please visit our website, myhealthunit.ca, for details on how you and your loved ones can reduce the risk of getting COVID-19 over the holidays. Next question is, what is your reaction to the provincial shutdown? As previously stated, I fully support the provincial shutdown. It is necessary to address the rising number of individuals testing positive provincially and locally. Without these restrictions being imposed across the province, there was a greater risk of travel from areas of high case counts to low case counts. Our Kaipo from Kojiko asks, what is your message to residents who live alone and who want to visit another household to celebrate Christmas? We realize that the holidays are a time for togetherness for most people and spending the holidays alone can be very difficult. For those who live alone, it is acceptable for one individual to visit and to spend time with another at another home. As long as that relationship between the home and the individual is exclusive, meaning that no close contact is occurring with other individuals or other homes. PJ Wilson from the Nugget asks, will there be consequences such as fines for those found in breach of the local shutdown provisions? Yes. So individual circumstances may be taken into consideration, it is important that everyone follow the shutdown restrictions. Otherwise, we risk having the shutdown extended. Consequently, violations will be taken seriously. Those found in breach may risk charges or fines. So please visit our website, uh, our COVID-19 page for the correct contact information when reporting a breach. Will North Bay Police OPP and Anishinaabek Police Services be advised to keep an eye out for possible rule breakers over the Christmas, New Year's holidays? For example, multiple vehicles at obvious house parties. Yes, individuals who are found in breach of the provincial shutdown restrictions risk having significant fines imposed. There are a number of types of officers in the province with the authority to issue these fines, including North Bay Police, OPP, and Anishinaabek Police Services. So thank you for all these very thoughtful questions. And we have asked a lot of everyone this year. Thank you for stepping up and helping to slow the spread of the virus in our district. I know everyone is weary of COVID-19. We just want to get back to a normal life. But that just isn't our reality right now. There is still more to be done and we will get it done. So I urge you to continue to follow public health measures and only celebrate this holiday season with people you live with. Wishing you all a very happy and healthy holiday season and happy and healthy new year. Thank you.